Yeah. So, you're sitting there, you just got done watching The Mandalorian, and you're like, man, I really want to get myself a Mando helmet. So you pull up a quick Google search, and you start to realize that not only do half of them look like scams, there's no way you're getting a Mandalorian helmet for $69. The other half, including the officially licensed Hasbro replica, kind of looks like junk. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn a roll of filament into something even better. Let's get started. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Frank, and there's a lot to cover in this video, so I want to jump right into it. But throughout this entire video, I'm going to show you how to 3D print, sand, paint, and make your very own Mandalorian helmet. This is my old helmet, but I know I can do better now. So I want to show you through this entire video how to end up with results that are even better than this. Now I will say right off the bat, I'm going to be using a very particular finishing process called graphite powder. You've probably heard this term if you're in the Mandalorian cosplay building scene, but this is the finishing process I'm going to use. However, you can use 90% of this video to still make your own Mandalorian helmet. Whether you're going to be spray painting it or doing something like Aluma Luster or Duralume to get that really nice screen accurate finish, most of this video is going to apply to any of those processes, but the very last step to get that nice metallic finish is going to use this. If you want to use something else, you can pretty much stop watching there and go do your own thing, but this is what I'm going to be using for this video. Now, in my personal opinion, this is the cheapest and easiest way to get the best possible finish without having to use something like an HVLP gun or an airbrush. Those do look better, but I haven't seen Kansas spray paint be able to do something like this. But let's get onto the computer, start looking at how to print and slice this thing, and we'll get off to the races. Okay, here we are. Let's look at the files. Oh, sorry, let me get this uh, filth off the screen. Anyway, I have a couple files laid out here. This is a free Mandalorian helmet by the Broken Nerd, a very accurate file, and it's broken up exactly how we're gonna be printing it. Those little ear pieces, I don't know what they're called. I'm gonna call them ears this entire time, deal with it. And the vent is all separated. You can download this file, or you can get something from the Galactic Armory, 15 bucks, beautiful file set. Um, the Holy Grail seems to be by Great Ape Studios. His helmet pretty much broken up the exact same way he just has a couple little extra pieces in the ear section for this video though i'm going to be using the file set by akira yuming he's made a bunch of iron man helmets and stuff and uh his file set's only 10 bucks it looks pretty accurate and i like it a lot you can see he's included all of the same parts. He even has a template for the visor, but I don't really print that. So let's look at what these files look like. Now for this video and build, I'm gonna be using the Bamboo P1P. Uh, it has a rather small build plate for making helmets. I actually had to scale the helmet down to 97% just to get it to fit onto the build plate. You can use whatever slicer you want, whatever printing method you want. I will go over a couple settings. However, if you want my settings for Cura, go check out my original how to 3D print a Mandalorian uh, video up here. This tells you the uh, the Cura settings, how to block out the top support bar so you don't you know use a bunch of material. That will help and um, I'll put like a little timestamp to start watching it right here and that's the only information you're going to need from this video because there's a lot newer updated information in this one. We're not going to be using the visor here so we can just delete that. We're going to make the visor later from hand. Um, so I just arrange all the little ear bits kind of like this. Always stand them up as much as possible. This is going to help you extract the most quality out of your 3D printer. If you lay them flat you're gonna get something called top layering and it's just gonna be a lot more work to sand um, so go ahead arrange them however you want I print them all at once as close as possible it uses less support material because it doesn't have to spread out as far and in this case of the p1p I had like I said I had to scale it down to 97% twist it a little bit to just barely get it to fit but it does fit not only that if you go up here to seam painting or support painting sorry you do not need to print the top of the dome. If you look in here, I've gone and blocked out all of this. If you're using bamboo, um, right-clicking, or sorry, left-clicking paints on supports, uh, right-clicking deletes the support. So I'm gonna erase all of the required supports for the top dome area. It's still gonna print fine, don't worry. You can do this on a lot of helmets. There is no need to flip this helmet upside down to print it. You're gonna uh, ruin a lot of the details on the top mohawk part, so just print it like this. As for settings and quality, on the bamboo, I'm running a 0.12 millimeter layer height. Uh, again, you can raise or lower that. Uh, the better quality you can extract from the printer, the less post-processing and sanding you have to do. 
pretty simple. As far as strength goes, I'm using a 15% infill. You can pick whatever pattern you use. I'm using grid in this case. In Cura, I really like gyroid. I'm leaving all the speeds the same. Uh, my friend Nick actually slowed his down to like 150 for a little bit of better quality, but the 200 millimeter second average worked fine for this. Make sure you enable supports. I pretty much leave all the support settings how they are in Bamboo. Um, you can increase and decrease certain things, but that's totally up to you. And I just make sure that bed adhesion's on in some way, shape, or form. I have a very small brim. Let's slice this. So the little detail bits are gonna print just fine. You can see here on the top, that's what I mean by top layering. Um, that's very easy to sand down. You don't want this across the entire face or sides of those little parts. So standing them up gets you a much better quality. And this is gonna take five hours on the P1P, not bad at all. As for the main dome, we're looking at 22 hours, 23 hours. And if you look inside, you'll see there are no supports on the inside. You don't need them, it'll print just fine. And it's gonna use a little more than half a roll of filament. That's pretty good for a full size helmet. So in less than one roll of filament, you're getting a whole Mandalorian helmet for what, 20 bucks for a roll of filament. Now don't turn it into this contest in the comments or on the Facebook groups about, oh, well I printed mine in 20 hours or mine, what are you doing? You can block, shut up, print the helmet, get the helmet printed so you can actually work on it. Who cares if you were able to shave an hour or two off if the print fails, it doesn't matter. So just print the helmet so we can move on to the next step. So that's pretty much it for the computer work. So now let's get into the garage, get everything printed and start attacking the post-processing of this project and make the best Mandalorian helmet we can. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if it fits at 97% and <gasps> yeah. Oh man, my nose. All right, my nose doesn't stick out. That means the visor is gonna fit. Man, I look goofy as heck like this, but that's per, oh man, that is perfect. Just a little bit of padding to bring it up right there. Oh, we're in business. Let's get the ears printed and keep this project going. The first thing I'm gonna work on doing is getting any big layer lines knocked down. I do not need to hit this with 60 grit. Um, typically, if it was a lower quality, I would. I'm gonna actually just start off on 220 grit sandpaper. This guy right here, smooth this down as much as possible by hand. There's only some layer lines up top I need to clean up and then these detail lines and I can hit it with a first coat of primer. So let's sand this down by hand. Okay, so I decided to get all of the little side bits and parts to fit first. Um, I went and sanded down the back vent and it, it fits in there perfectly. I don't have to do any modifications. That just locks in there. As for the little side ear bits, um, everything lines up great. I will glue these on after the fact. This way I can take advantage of gravity when painting this. Um, that's something a lot of people don't really talk about is if this has layer lines on it, don't stand it up. Let gravity do a little bit of the work. When you spray paint something, especially filler primer, it is still kind of a liquid. So if you lay it down like this, the paint's gonna be kind of self-leveling. So as you spray it and do wet coats, it's gonna settle a lot more. So all of these little pieces, I'm gonna just spray them flat. Um, I hit them all with 220 grit, they look great. The only thing that's not fitting are these little alignment pegs right here. Um, they're just, they're blown out just a little bit. They do fit, but they don't close perfectly. I could do a couple different things, but I'm actually just gonna take a drill bit and make these bigger real fast. So let's do that. Boom, look at that. Goes on all the way now, and I have a good alignment point. So yeah, let's do the other side. Good to go, they'll fit, everything is looking good. So let's now start sanding the helmet, and uh, that's gonna take, it's gonna take a little bit. Okay, I think we're sanded enough. It's pretty smooth with this 220 grit. Um, I got home from work around 5 p.m. and I went in and ate dinner. It's almost 8 p.m. So this is about, let's say about two and a half hours of just hand sanding and I made you know really good progress on it. So you can see there's still some lines in it, some deeper areas like that, but I'm gonna hit it with its first coat of primer. This, 
you can put time into either side of this. You can spend a lot of time sanding it, getting into the details, getting it as smooth as possible and using less primer, or you can do a quick scuff and cover it in primer. It, it's tomato potato at that point. Um, since in my mind, sandpaper is cheaper, I mean, not, you know, sandpaper is much cheaper than primer. I try to always get it as smooth as possible. I just didn't want to break out the power sander right now. I could get this smoother, but again, I'm all right with this. I know it's going to start coming out good. So let's go, let's go get some primer on this helmet. We're going to be using the gray duplicolor filler primer because I can't find the red anymore. And first we're going to do a nice little dust coat on all of the parts. And once that gets a little tacky, like you can touch it, but the paint doesn't come off, then we're going to start doing uh, some heavier wet coats. Okay, it's the next day and the primer is dry. It came out pretty good, but I'm gonna do a good pass of 220 grit. Um, the back is particularly smooth. That came out really nice. Um, the worst layer lines right now are just in these cheek areas. So I'm gonna do another pass of sanding with 220. And then uh, I might even be able to do some 500 grit, maybe dry or wet, but we'll get there. So yeah, let's get back to sanding. Okay, sanding's going pretty good. Um, this is just a pass of 220 grit. Now, I was able to layer up and cake up a lot more primer on the top, so this is nice and smooth, but you can see, I don't know, areas like back here, I can still feel some of these lines. So I'm gonna do one more coat of filler primer over this, probably not as heavy as I went before, uh, but this is looking really good. I'm actually really happy with the results of this. This is one round of sanding, and then one round of primer. Now, a lot of people ask this a lot. Um, oh, how many coats of primer did you do? Uh, a lot, a little. Um, what do you consider a coat? Do you consider a coat one pass or a full coverage? And it just, it doesn't really add up. Like, it's not a good metric to follow. Um, so I do one pass of primer. So the entire thing gets covered, a couple wet coats, I build it up. If it runs a little bit, oh well, it's primer, sand it back down. So that's just one round of primer. Uh, I think I used like a quarter of the can, didn't use too much. Um, so now I'm gonna do another round of primer on top of this. So we're, this took about uh, half an hour to sand back down, plus all these little pieces. So I'm gonna keep rinsing and repeating this process until we move into the black base coat. We're gonna do a gloss black base coat on this after the last round of primer. So once that's smooth, um, we'll be able to move on to the next step. So yeah. Okay, so I'm almost done with the primer and sanding stage. However, I've gone and done a light coat of matte black paint. Now this isn't to get ready for the actual gloss black that's gonna be on it. This is something called a guide coat. This is a trick that's used in body work in the automotive industry, and I can't believe I haven't talked about it earlier in the channel. Um, basically, you're gonna start spraying opposing colors. My next goal here is to sand off all of this black because there's gray primer underneath it. Now, if I can't sand off all the black, there's gonna be black lines left all over the helmet. Those are your valleys. Those are the spots in the layer lines that I haven't filled yet. And it'll be very apparent when I sand this part of the ear. So I'm gonna try to sand all of the black off and then I can do another coat of primer and then I can do another coat of black. Or you can just keep going back and forth. So I try to sand the black off and uh, then I do more black and then I do gray. You're basically just trying to get the opposing colors on top of each other. So let me start sanding this down. I had a couple runs on the primer, not a big deal. We're still in the priming and standing stage, but this is gonna help us get a much smoother finish. Hey yo, disembodied voice Frank here. Now it's time to start applying the color. I went all the way back through the sanding and priming and I love how smooth this helmet looks. This is exactly what we want. This was the final coat of primer and it looks near perfect. I'm happy with it. We're gonna be using a gloss black Krylon and just start layering it on. Go light it first, a nice dust coat, and then you're gonna start building up a sheen or wet coats. 
practice on some scrap pieces if you've never used this paint before and take your time. Just, you do not want to rush this and mess something up. You do not want to mess this up. Don't mess it up. So I ruined the paint. Um, this is what I get for rushing. I, 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 I knew I should have recorded myself spraying a, another coat of black and I'm like, no, they, they, they know, they figured it out. They, they're up to this point. And so I just went upstairs and I sprayed it and everything orange peeled. You can see it right there through the reflections on the top. Uh, yep, there it is, look at it all. Um, it really happened on the top of the Mando helmet. Um, every single little piece on the side, orange peeled. And this was, uh, this was because this will happen. I'm kind of glad it happened. This can happen for a couple different reasons. Orange peel can happen when um, your first coat and your second coat don't play well. They don't adhere well, even if it's the same paint. Maybe I didn't shake the can long enough. Maybe I was spraying too close, too far, a temperature differential. Um, I did take some 220 grit sandpaper to the first layer of gloss black to try to knock it down. I could have left some dust particles on it. Uh, I could have left oily fingerprints on it. You can have orange peel or bad paint reactions just for a couple different reasons. This is why it's very important, A, to take your time, and B, to test things. There's no perfect way to avoid orange peel. It's just understanding the paints you're using. Um, this isn't the end of the world. I'm gonna sand this down, and I'm actually gonna divert a little bit. I think what I'm gonna do is sand this back down a little bit, and then go ending, uh, I'm gonna end up using a satin black paint Get that nice and smooth, and then I'm gonna clear coat that. Instead of just trying to use the all-in-one gloss black, which you can do, I just, I wanna see if I can get it to look better the other way. So let's sand this back down. Um, I'm not sanding it back down the primer, by the way, guys. I'm just trying to remove some of the orange peel. Honestly, this little vent piece came out pretty good. I might not sand this back down. This actually looks pretty good. Um, I'm okay with this. So yeah, we have one survivor, and everything else, yeah. Sucks, but it happens. Okay, so I totally lied to you guys. I did not end up doing the matte black with the high gloss clear coat. I went right back to the normal gloss black. I was just more patient with my layer application. And as you can see, it started to come out really nice and smooth. But I did want to take it one step farther and I used the 1K Duplicolor high gloss clear coat. Started misting it on very lightly. I know it doesn't look like I'm misting it here because it has a lot of overspray. But after I did a mist coat and let that get tacky, then I started doing the wet sheen coats. And you can see here that the entire helmet is starting to get a nice gloss reflective finish. Um, you don't need to do this if you just use the normal gloss black, but I wanted to give it a little bit more protection. So I really caked on the uh, high gloss uh, clear coat. And once this was dry, and make sure you give this plenty of time to dry, I think I let it sit there for like a day and a half and it cured up beautifully. And then it was on to the next step. Okay, so now it's time for my favorite part of the process, applying the graphite powder or graphite rub. This helmet came out beautiful. I could probably sit here for another day or two, um, wet sand, buff, polish, and then do another clear coat, but I am more than happy with the shine and reflectiveness on this. Um, and it's not supposed to be 100% perfect. You know, it's a forged metal Beskar helmet, whatever. Now, at this point, you could stop and divert to a different paint scheme. Most paints you're gonna do, Alumiluster, Duralumum, um, even spray paint, are gonna require a nice gloss black finish. So if you wanna do graphite rub like I'm about to do, you wanna do Alumiluster or some HVLP or airbrush, totally up to you. But getting to this process, the better this part looks, the better the next step will look. So make sure you have a, a really nice, ah, man, that looks great, yeah. So for doing graphite rub, uh, all you need is some uh, graphite powder. You get it on Amazon or um, some cotton swabs and gloves because this stuff makes a absolute mess you're going to stain your fingers even with gloves on um, but it's worth it so I'm gonna move the camera we're gonna top down kind of view and we'll uh, we'll get to work take the cotton swab just dip it into the powder nothing crazy and then what I do is I dab it on the part and then once it's kind of spread around that's when you're gonna start buffing it into the paint And you'll end up with something that looks like that. Oh man, that came out. That came out so good. Let's do the uh, rest of the ear part, whatever you want to call it. I don't know the official name, sue me. Look at that. So here's a nice little, see if I can get the reflections right, a nice little before and after of just how much of a difference this makes. That is beautiful. There's a little up close here, let's do that. Neat.
All right, now the best part, the whole helmet. Huh. Hopefully I get some good footage of this. We'll see how it goes. Just, just gotta dive in, I guess. All right, all done. As for protecting the graphite rub, um, you don't need to, or at least I never have. As long as you wipe everything down really nice at the end there, just wipe it down with a cloth or a rag. That's it, look, not, like nothing came off. I had already wiped it down once and I can touch, I can touch this, I can get my fingers all over it and it's not coming off, like it stays on. It, you're, you're actually pushing the graphite flakes into the clear coat and paint it's permanently staining it like that's what's happening um now if it does start to rub off over time put more graphite rub on it like if it starts to fade or dull just do more graphite it's not that hard the other complaint people will have is saying oh well it gets fingerprints on it you know oh you know i have fingerprints on it have you guys never touched real metal before anything this smooth and shiny that's metallic it's gonna leave fingerprints. You can't have the best of both worlds. You can't expect something to look and operate like metal, but not have the properties, the material properties of metal. Something smooth and shiny like this is gonna get fingerprints. It's just kind of unavoidable, but it wipes off. Just be careful with it. Um, I do know some people who have had some success putting 2K clear coat over this with, with an HVLP gun or an airbrush. Um, I've never really seen the need to do it in this case. So d definitely, you know, play around with it, experiment, but I'm more than happy with this finish. And if it's just a display piece that you're not wearing as a cosplay, this looks absolutely great. And like I said, if it starts to rub off over time, um, just reapply more, why not? But that's it for the paint. Oh God, this thing looks so good in the camera. I can't stop looking at it, especially with the hexagon lights above. Um, anyway, yeah, it's time for, it is time to assemble this thing, get the visoring, glue the side parts on. That's pretty much it. So let's get back inside and do that. Move over, Rover. It's a voiceover. Yeah, I'm dubbing over this because I'm an idiot and I didn't talk during this process. Anyway, I just started super gluing the ear parts on. Um, Two-part Cyana Acrylite works great. The accelerator did not affect the graphite rub at all. Just make sure you don't get super glue where you don't want it. For this next part, I started tinting the visor. This is a clear sheet of PETG plastic. You can get them for a vacuum former on Amazon. There's links for all of this stuff down below. So you're gonna spray some soapy water on it. You're gonna take the window tint, you get it at AutoZone or wherever. You lay it down, lots of soapy water, and then you start working the bubbles out. It does take a lot of patience to do this stuff, but once you figure out how to do it, it is very rewarding, and you can make visors super easy at any tints and shapes or whatever. Make sure you have a good razor and a clean environment and just have at it. I have a full tutorial on how to make cosplay visors like this for Mandalorian helmets and Samus helmets or Halo, wherever you want to use. That is linked down below as well or in the little box that probably just popped up right now. So go check that out. Making visors is super easy and it unlocks a lot of possibilities. And once the visor was done, I kind of phoned it in and duct taped it into the helmet. You could super glue it, you could weld it, do whatever you want, but the duct tape worked well fine. Now, this window tint isn't that dark. I want to be able to see through this helmet pretty good, but the problem is because it's not that dark, you can see my nose through it. It pushes up against the lens. So what I've gone and done is I've layered up a couple extra um, bits of uh, PETG tinted from leftovers. So there's two strips sitting behind there to layer up the tint even more. Now you could put a piece of black acrylic or black tape, something to cover that up so I can just see right through here. You can see the difference in visibility uh, from the top and bottom and where the cutoff is. And you really can't tell from the front that it's even there. And it just stops you from seeing my nose, which I'm happy about. Um, so feel free to cover that up however you want. But that's pretty much it for this helmet. Oh yeah, padding. We have to put some padding in it to make it comfortable. Let's go do that. Oh, 
Okay, all done. Um, just gone and thrown some pretty standard foam inside of there. I've actually started using soundproofing foam because you can get this stuff super cheap in whole sheets. It's really flexible, easy to cut down, and uh, I put it on the sides, like the ear spots. Um, it, it just squishes down great. So yeah, however, you, however comfortable you want to make it, you can spend as much time as you want on that. Hot glue and foam go a very long way. <clears throat> So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, guys. I love how nice this helmet came out. There are a few blemishes on it. I got a little weird speck uh, right there. You can kind of see it. Oh well, I, this thing's gonna battle damaged and weathered over time anyway. I mean, have you seen his helmet in the show? It's never clean. But just seeing the quality difference in my own work, I'm, I'm super blown away how far I've come with this. Um, and it is such an easy process to do. No, I still think this helmet looks pretty good. This one looks better though. And you can apply this method to really any type of armor, uh, full Mandalorian armor or whatever. I, I think, like I said before, this gives you the best finish that doesn't involve um, you know, HVLP or some advanced type of spraying, even airbrush. Now, those do look amazing and Luma Luster is literally what they used in the show. But I think bang for your buck, this graphite rub, it's just hard to beat it. So that's totally up to you. But hopefully throughout this video, you did learn something new, how to print the Mandalorian helmet, some tips in post-processing and sanding, how to get a good gloss black, how to make visors, all of that fun stuff. It was a fun video to do, and I'm super happy to have this new Mandalorian helmet on the shelf. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw in this video, drop some comments down below. I read all of them, and I do my best to respond to as many as possible. And if you like what you saw, please consider subscribing to the channel. I have a lot more tutorials and work, kind of like this blue beetle helmet. Oop, can't show you more than that. Um, so I have a lot more stuff in work, and I would love to be able to show you guys. Oh, hey, and look, I've been holding this helmet this entire time and touching it, and none of the graphites come off. Weird. But that's going to be a wrap for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching, and you have a good day. How to 3D print, sand, paint, and build your very own Mandalorian. Caught it. <laughs> well, there's the blooper. <laughs> Ooh.